Defending champions Parramatta running from right to left. Michael Cronin kicking off the match under the control of Kevin Roberts. And Chris Mortimer is the first of the Bulldogs to be tackled by the Parramatta defence line. Penalty. And a little bit of fisticuffs there as Billy Johnston went to ground. But the penalty has been given to Parramatta against the man who played the ball, taking the marker out of it. And at this stage, we welcome into the commentary former South Sydney coach Bill Anderson. Looking forward to it. Well, I think Parramatta have the advantage of a settled combination. They've kept their strength from 1983. Canterbury Banks down have built up and they've got quite a few new faces on that score. Ray on going to swing to the Eels to win this one. Big opportunity for Parramatta to grab first points. This kick for Cronin's 20 metres in from touch. Cronin makes no mistake. So the first points come in the Opening 60 seconds, and the Eels lead the Bulldogs two points to nil. Big crowd in attendance at Belmore under grey skies, probably in the vicinity of 18,000 here, as Chris Mortimer stabs it down towards the Parramatta goal line, and that's David Lydiard taking it out. The yard met by Tunks, Lease, and Robinson. Here's Stewart, former Rabideau, the only new face in the Parramatta side by comparison with their grand final team. Price is taking plenty of punishment in there. Tunks and Kelly were working on him. Peter Wynn has uh, taken objection to the treatment that Price was getting and the penalty has gone to Parramatta. Roberts has said to Peter Wynn, I'm the referee, I'll hand out the, the cautions and the penalties. One of the areas that coach Warren Ryan said that he was going to improve in the Bulldogs was the strength in their defence and looking at that defence early in this game, they certainly are fired up. To use a Jack Gibson Expression, the Bulldogs have come out smoking. But they're trailing 2-0 as Jerd takes it ahead to the halfway. Robinson was low in 10. Tunks was over the top. Now it's Wynn. The luckless Peter Wynn. He'll be looking for a season free of injury, I would suspect. And a kick from Sterling, regathered by Lydiard. Snappy football by the Eels. Good defence by Chris Mortimer. Peter Sterling, Stewart, Sharp, met by Johnston. Least was in there too with folks. Stewart again, left for Taylor, holds it up from Sterling, gives it to Wynn. Wynn gallops down to the 22, Lydiard's inside. Again, Chris Mortimer has to make the tackle. But the Eels looking very sharp. This is the last tackle for them. Sterling will bomb it, there it goes. Mortimer tried to put him down. It's in the end goal and over the dead ball line. It'll be a 22 place kick restart for uh, Canterbury Bankstown. Touch judge in. Jeff Robinson being called up. Johnston taking the tap and Kelly with his left knee heavily taped takes it ahead. Johnston with a dummy half scamper. Cut down by Taylor. And here's Robinson and again Taylor is around the legs. They've had a good record against Parramatta Canterbury over the years. Here at Belmore, 83. Canterbury got the points in both premiership encounters but it was at the cricket ground when the wheels fell off. Growth! Big job over there for Kevin Pobgey today. He was eventually tackled by Terry Lamb. 
one could be excused for thinking that neither of these sides have had an off-season. They've both started with a tremendous amount of confidence in their handling and showing a real willingness to move the ball about. Canterbury's penalty. And it's against Parramatta for endeavouring to screw the scrum. Not packing it square. Differential for Andrew Farrer. And he puts it out into the hill crowd. The tap to be taken just outside the Parramatta quarter by Johnston. Decoy running blindside. It came open side for Robinson. He's lost it. He's coughed it up. Sharp, Price, Sterling, Kenny. Got his pass down to Cronin. Cronin's put it on the deck. Picked up by Ella. Typical Parramatta play. First tackle, you'll find the statistics show that they have scored more tries on one or six than any other play. Peter Wynn. Driven back by the Canterbury defence. Sharps put it down. Lamb can't go on with it. And a scrum to pack now. Centre field just outside the Parramatta quarter. I told you Ken Stewart was the only new face in the Parramatta team. Four new faces for Canterbury. Lamb, Pobgy, Tunkson, Kelly in today's side. Mortimer to work it. Lock forward standing. Free from the scrum when it got behind the second rower's feet. And now it's switched to the hillside and Farrah He's got a pass inside for Peter Mortimer to score. That looks so simple. Peter Mortimer scores the first try. Taking Canterbury to a four points to two lead. See it on the MEC replay from Steve. It went through Terry Lamb, Andrew Farrah galloped into open space. He ran an angle. He ran an angle and Peter Mortimer came inside. This is a simple four-pointer to Canterbury Banks down. Really, the, the whole crux of the matter was that Peter Wynn just didn't have enough pace to go with Andrew Farrer. He skipped clear of a tackle, turned the ball inside to Peter Mortimer, and he was in free space. Peter Mortimer picks up the first try that you've seen tonight on the first of our NEC big game replays. Terry Lamb is the goal kicker for Canterbury. up the conversion sending Canterbury to a six points to two lead Kelly Robinson trampled over the top of uh, Brett Kenny's vain attempt to stop him This man is folks stabbing it off for the touch line and finding it and maybe Kenny got a hand to that. Roberts asked the question of the touch judge, did he in fact get a touch? We can see from this scrum that Jeff Robinson's gone into the front row even though he's programmed as number 10 in the second row and Peter Tunks is in the second row in a position that he's more accustomed to. Parramatta winning the scrum and Steve Ella. Wrapped up by Jim Lees. Taylor, Cronin's put it down again. Steve Folks playing at centre field. Parramatta's 22 line. Lease is put down with uh, number 10, Peter Wynn over the top. He's got a lot of blood uh, coming from a gash in the top of the head. Peter Wynn. Peter Kelly. He's 10 metres out. Centre field. Now Johnston. This Canterbury team is looking extremely strong in the forwards. They're being allowed to stand in tackles and offload. Chance for a drop goal for Lamb. I think it's good. It is. Canterbury extend their lead now. Seven points to two with a drop goal by Terry Lamb. We've got a bullet-like pass from Steve Mortimer. And uh, as the saying go, goes a uh, little fish are sweet. 7-2 now for Canterbury. 
a worried look on Michael Cronin's face. Not only is the, the captain of Parramatta for the moment. Twice he's put it down, once under pressure, not so the second time. And that kick from Cronin taken by Tunks. Robinson. He's a crowd favourite here at Belmore. Wild bull of the Pampers, they call him. Kelly's doing some work. This is folks feeding off him. Ball's been put down. Scooped away by Johnston Talese. Parramatta just not making sure of their first up tackles. And that first up tackle, that's the most important one. You've got to make it. Inside pass from Tunks to Anderson. Players just near the halfway line. Mortimer. That's another example of it. And this is Lee showing it, but being put down by Sharp and Cronin. Canterbury working it to that blind, and Mortimer's firing it off, and he's kicked it to growth. Left knee heavily taped and ridden to the ground by Folks and Pobgy. Steve Sharp. The Premier's down, seven points to two. Mayors. Cronin. He's uh, trying to get around Tunks, but Tunks picked him up. Warren Ryan, the new coach for uh, Canterbury, 79 to 82 with Newtown, took the, the blue bags to a grand final. John Money, 81-83, deputy to Jack Gibson. At the moment, it'd be a rather pleased Warren Ryan, a rather worried John Money, but not at the moment, I wouldn't think, as the Parramatta players make the ball do the work, and Ken Stewart puts it down. Folks. Taken by Jewett, side on tackle. Chris Mortimer hitting it up hard. If you're going to run onto a pass, that's the way to do it. He's got Peter Wynn. He's got Peter Wynn for a swinging arm. He was going to fail to find touch. Paul Taylor looked as though he was going to move in field for it, and then all of a sudden he gave up. A good kick by Farrah, as it turned out. This is Kelly. Play is now on the Parramatta 22. Steve Mortimer, short ball for Tunks. Johnston, dummy half run to the blind. Met by Sharp. Here's Mortimer, another short ball for the forward out wide. Robinson, oh, Robinson was offering the ball back to Mortimer, and then all of a sudden he got a don't argue from Mayers. And another shot for drop goal from Lamb. That was charged down by Parramatta. Fallen upon by Tunks. And the ball picked up now by Lees. Peter Mortimer. Taken in by Cronin. Steve Mortimer. Around Mayers, although he's hanging onto the leg. Farrah. Yellow low, Taylor High. Folks. Kevin Roberts must have gone back to the first tackle from that knockdown in play. Canterbury picking up a penalty. Is this is... This is one of the areas where Parramatta must have the edge on Canterbury Banks down. Terry Lamb isn't a noted goal kicker, although he did kick as a junior in, in, his, uh, in his younger days. But, uh, of course, with the, the statistics that we have on Terry, uh, on Michael Crone, and you now he's just un unmatched in first grade rugby league in Sydney as a goal kicker. Terry Lamb, 39.3%. That was uh, his goal kicking record from last year at Wests. So this kick for Terry Lamb is... 18 metres in from touch. It's about 30 metres out. Here he comes. Got the height. Looks good. He's got it. The Bulldogs leading Parramatta by nine points to two. Teeing off tonight. Johnston 51.3 last year, 
Stewart, 48.7. Scrum one against the feed by um, Canterbury. That's a good trick. And a knock on. In fact, it's probably a more important statistic than the actual total at the bottom of the tape with scrums these days. Yeah, scrums one against the feet. It's not a matter of how many you win and lose. It's a matter of when and where you win them. Parramatta's won this one. Sterling trying to jink his way through. Found Kenny with a good pass. And Kenny's given up the Cronin over the top to Ella. Out to Growth. Growth being covered there by Andrew Farrah. He's got rid of him. No, he hasn't. Farrah hung on there. Now it's Ella. Here's Peter Wynn. Turning it back for Ella. They're 32 metres out from the Canterbury line. Sharp. Sterling. Cronin. Mears is coming up. Turn back for Sterling. Torpedoed out for Kenny, uh, for Kenny now. He's away. But tripped uh, by Lamb, which has punctuated the attack. Jerd, Stewart, Sharp. Sharp sees a gap. Gallops into it. Crosses 32. Goes to the quarter. Touched by Canterbury. It's gone to Taylor. This could be a sensational try. Cronin's got two to choose from. Goes himself. And that is an absolutely magnificent rugby league try. Evans, above where did that all start? Well, where the name of goodness did this all start from? How many sets of hands? Michael Cronin scored it. It went to Sterling. Then Cronin, he jinxed as Mayers came running up. He turned it inside to Sterling, who fed it out with a long pass to Kenny. He was tripped by Lamb, gave it back to Jerd. Jerd then, he did well. He got inside the defence. Stewart gave a quick ball. And then Steve Sharp, he saw an opening and galloped up to the 22. Taylor ducked under one. Cronin then had the choice of Ella inside, growth outside. And he said, why risk it? I'll go myself. A great rugby league try. You can't practice for that. You can't teach that. You don't coach that. That's just brilliant Parramatta football. And while all that was happening, did we happen to get a count on how many hands it went through? Peter Prolingos keeping stats for me again this year. Only eight. I thought it might have been a touch more. The kick from Cronin is one up, one down. He's given the goal. Roberts has given the goal. Nine points to eight in favour of the Bulldogs. There's a replay of it. <laughs> what an awful job for Kevin Roberts to have to be the tiebreaker on that one. Kick in for that bottom corner. It's fielded there by Sterling, given to Gross, and here's Gross. Pumping those legs across the ground, getting rid of one. Ooh, gee, Anderson hit him hard. Away goes Lydiard now. You just cannot afford to give growth any room. When he gets wound up such as he did then, he's almost unstoppable. Peter Wynn. Some very heavy body contact in the forward exchanges, let alone that clash between Anderson and Growth. Jerd. Every bone in his body shaking there as he was hit by Kelly and Robinson. Parramatta have been hemmed only 15 metres out from their line, and they've had five tackles. Cronin getting it to Sterling. Sterling shapes to kick, doesn't, turns it inside to Ella. He does the same, then passes back to Chris Anderson. We saw a very good fifth tackle option there. Sterling faked the kick, decided to run the ball, and Parramatta had extras, and it was only poor handling which stopped a very long break. Steve Folks asked to play it. Mortimer, Tunks. Canterbury's pattern very much the same. As we spoke about some ten minutes back, a couple of big forwards off Mortimer. The question mark being when will he go himself? And here he is now. Tackle on the 22. Last tackle for the Bulldogs. Lamb. It's a cross kick. It's a good kick from Terry. Beautifully taken by Taylor. Great take by Taylor. Of course, he's got that height disadvantage, but he got up there like Greg Brentman. Oh, what a place to knock on, on the first tackle, in front of your uprights. 
a little bit of over exuberance there by Parramatta. They were looking to spread the ball. They did have extras on the right hand side, but the handling didn't match the idea. This will be a Canterbury feed and a very good chance for the, the blue and whites to extend their lead of one point. Penalty to Canterbury. Again, Stewart for getting down in the scrum. So what's Andrew going to do? I think he's going to probably kick it backwards to give them 10 metres between the attack line and the defence line when they take the actual tap. That's what he's done there. If you're wondering what that was all about. Uh, just politely put the ball backwards to give himself 10 metres between himself and defence. No doubt Canterbury will set for a play here on the third or fourth tackle and I'd be surprised if Steve Morden wasn't the, wasn't the critical man. So that's the second tackle and here goes Steve Morden from dummy half. He's lost it. No, he's, he must have gobbled it back in before, he, uh, before it hit the ground. Now that's four tackles gone. I think the play was a couple back actually, but it's all fallen apart for Canterbury on this particular occasion. There's five they've, tackles. They've got extras out on the left-hand side if they can get it there. There's the bomb by Steve Mortimer. His brother Peter, I think, is offside. Billy, Billy Johnston's got the ball. And he's ruled a turnover. So Parramatta comes up with it. Uh, what's Stan Jurd done? Well, the rules really, very, the rule is very clear. The player must pick up the ball, bring it to his chest, and then he's allowed to play it. What a place on the field to do that. Yeah, that's suicidal football. Right in front of the uprights, the simplest of penalties for Terry Lamb. Sometimes I think a lot of players should sit down with a rule book. Terry Lamb's kicked two from two. Penalty count is 7-2 in favour of Canada. a pretty big divot but there's there's no worries about that one canterbury bankstown leading Parramatta, 11 points to eight by the right quick march introducing toyota <laughs> hit by mortimer it's locked in there the scrum collapsing Parramatta's penalty down in the scrum, you'll find the last man up will be wearing a blue and white jumper. There he is. <laughs> up you get, Billy. Cronin just stabs it across the touchline as Billy Johnston gets back the 10. And 11-8 the scoreline. Chance now for Parramatta. And that's the double run round, and the dummy from Price, it really came off. That was almost a replica of a try we saw at Brookvale last year. But he's ruled an obstruction against Parramatta. A little bit of Jack Gibson in that one, I think. Oh, I reckon. Yes, it had Gibson written right across it, but very similar move to the, the double hit and spin that uh, they put on against Manly at Brookvale last year that came off just the way the script was written. Oh, here's Billy Johnston to take this tap. Ten metres from the halfway. Steve Mortimer decides that it's time to start running himself a little bit. There's uh, folks dummying, but Canterbury forwards were stacked on top of one another. Folks to play it now. Forced back by the defence. Kelly. Had a vigorous start to the game, Peter. He's lost it. Picked up by Taylor. Look at the urgency with Parramatta when there's a turnover of possession. They try to move it, and they try to move it fast. But there'll be a knock-on against Terry Lamb. Referee Roberts calling it back. Stan Jert hung on there just a metre too long. If you've given that ball more quickly to his outside backs, they certainly had a try-scoring opportunity. Canterbury 
Still in scrum feed. And he got it in there, and it's won by Parramatta. It's out with Taylor. Taylor tries to step inside the 5'8 lamb and the lock lease. There's the result as he plays the ball. Now Sharp keeps the wrap up to the right. Gets a pass down for Price. Price losing his footing. A fairly greasy pitch. Kenny. Kenny's to the halfway, but he's off to the ground. And what a duel that one is. Brett Kenny, the Parramatta 5'8", opposed to Terry Lamb, the Canterbury 5'8". They're two people that are going to be right in the contention for the State of Origin 5'8 spot. Yeah. Lydiard. Playing it on the halfway. And of course, Lewis has got the jumper and Kenny wants that, but Lamb wants Kenny's. Turned over by Parramatta. Steve Mortimer met and tackled by his opposite number. Here's Tunks getting rid of Sterling. But Stewart's there with Mayers over the top as the halfback hangs on to a boot. Bit of a breeze coming down the ground in the first half. It's with Canterbury, most definitely. Probably about a three, only about a three-pointer in value. This is Chris Mortimer on five. Steve fires off a torpedo punt. It's got over the head of Lydiard, but it stopped like a, like a sand wedge with pitching iron, and uh, Lydiard it is. 32 metres out playing at the price. Taylor, dying minutes of the first half. Taylor, thumped to the ground by Robinson. Barrow was underneath. Stewart. About three minutes of the first half to go. Canterbury leading by three points. Peter Wynn. Sterling to Kenny. Kenny tried to get it away. He did, but the referee has ordered the knock on. Feed by Steve Mortimer. He got away with it. And then he's lofted a pass out for brother Peter, but Cronin was sweating on him. Chris Mortimer gives it to Jim Lease. And Lease is tackled by Kenny and Cronin. Plays about eight metres into Parramatta's area. And Steve Mortimer. Had a misunderstanding there with what play they were up to, and Andrew Farrah actually got in the road. Here he is now, Farrah. Big, young and very strong. Peter Kelly. Taken by Cronin and Sharp. Steve Mortimer puts the bomb up. Terry Lamb as the first of the attack is going through and another great take by the little man, Taylor. Grounded in goal, but he's been put under pressure in this first half. This little fellow, Squizzy Taylor, and he's come out of it with an unblemished record so far. At 90 seconds of the first half remaining, it's coming down to Captain Chris Anderson. Don't be surprised if Canterbury elect to kick a field goal. There's only a minute to go in this match. They've got six tackles. They may not get to play them out. That extra point could be just the difference in the final washout. Johnston, Robinson, they're working it in close to the uprights, into centre ground. Lamb is standing back behind the ruck. Tunks hits it up again. Nothing flash. Mortimer will fire it to Lamb. He does. Here comes the drop goal attempt. It looks fine. It looks sweet. Two drop goals for Terry Lamb. Extending the scoreline further in Canterbury's favour to 12 points to eight now. This is how it happened. Taylor must have gone very close to getting a touch to that. Well, starting again with the siren. 
all but upon us as Lease knocks on from the kickoff. Scrum might might just pack. Sterling feeds it and he's recalled it. Taking the scrum further in field. That went straight through. Now he's decided he won't put it down again. That's the end of the first half. Well played. Canterbury leading Parramatta at the break by 12 points to 8. Welcome back for the second half of the NEC big game. First try of the match went to Canterbury's Peter Mortimer after Andrew Farrer had run the angle towards the corner. You'll see Mortimer come inside. There he is. A Canterbury in for an easy try against the defending champions Parramatta. At the 21st minute, the Eels struck back with a try involving something like eight or nine players. It came from that play of the ball to Cronin, Sterling, and a torpedo pass stretch play to the left to Kenny, who was ankle tapped by Terry Lamb. Jurd got involved for the second time in the try. He light footed his way around the defence before giving it to Steve Sharp. And Sharp then got in between the players. The defence of Canterbury fired it out wide to Taylor, ducked under one, then Cronin finished it off and Parramatta at half time trailing Canterbury 12 points to 8. Canterbury starting the second session, running right to left and this is Sterling working the cross with Lydiard. Lydiard hustled up. 10 metres out from his uprights. Here's Taylor making a little break. Mayers. A short ball down to Price, and then this is Jurd. Jurd trying to stay away from that touch line. Got a pass in field, but the touch judges ruled him on the line. And the scrum will go down. Midway 22, halfway. Parramatta's end of the field. Twelve eight then in favour of Canterbury. With the Mortimer feed and the penalty. No, he's ruled that it went straight through the tunnel. Mortimer coming around to work it again. And it's a penalty to Parramatta. This could be against the feed. It is. And in the second row against Steve Mortimer. Cronin taking the line finder. Nine metres into Canterbury's area. Sterling, good. Price. Short ball for growth. Mears. Price running the decoy to the blind, Sterling to the open, then Jurd right up the middle and Can Canterbury have half opened up, in fact they fully opened up and Kenny and Taylor, oh winger Eric Groth was sadly back in the play and I'm sure John Money will be disappointed in his international winger then. That was a good break by Parramatta, they found that hole which always exists behind the play of the ball, Jurd steamed through there, found support in Taylor but Groth was out of position and, able, and, un and unable to finish off what could have been a try. Jurd went steamrolling through, Kenny found Taylor. Taylor did exceptionally well and he looked to the left for a winger and Eric Groth was about 15 metres back. Barra finding touch. 10 metres from halfway. Robinson. Steve Mortimer. Steve Folks. Reaching the halfway. Johnston. Taken by Sharp. Peter Mortimer giving it to Andrew Farrow. One side to Steve Mortimer. He puts on a spurt. Gives it to his captain, who's met by Steve Allen. Play over in front of the Hill patrons at Billmore. And 
Mortimer puts up the kick. Oh, Lydiard. Blue high and came down with it. Then ankle tap by Terry Lamb and hit by Andrew Farrah. They're the situations that Lydiard is most dangerous in. He's a great broken field runner. If you don't go up in twos and threes to make sure of him, he can certainly split you. Three-man tackle on Cronin. Just outside the quarter. Sharp. Picked up by Stewart. Now Sterling, Mayers. Not from that gap that they found just a few minutes back with Jurd. That has been hitting. Oh, that was a tremendously exciting attempt then by Chris Mortimer to pull down that uh, kick for touch from Peter Sterling. But now what's happened, he's given Parramatta the feed. The real Derek Randall attempt. Well, if that was a scrum, oh, well, Kevin Roberts agrees. He's having trouble getting a tunnel. The feet are across miles before it gets in there. That's the trouble. Kenny run around with Cronin. Quick delivery out to Taylor. Linking up. Giving it to Ella. Ella's inside 32. Giving it to Lydiard. Lydiard's flying down that flank. Picked up by Anderson. Great example there of the coordination and the pace in that Parramatta back line. The overlap was created and Lydiard flying down the left-hand side was pulled down ultimately in a good tackle. Brett Kenny is tackled now on the Canterbury 22. 12 points to 8 in favour of Canterbury. Blindside for Parramatta's Peter Sterling. Up the centre goes Cronin. Oh, he looked inside, but there wasn't anybody there. 12 metres out. Peter win. Don't be surprised if Parramatta elects not to put the bomb up here. Uh, this is the fourth. Here comes five. Sterling, short ball for Cronin. Cronin is set for a hit and spin, but... Now the indication has been given. Five tackles gone. What will Sterling do? Mayers runs from dummy half. He puts it up. Came off a Canterbury player's hand. Sterling's got the ball. And he's ruled the first tackle. Good refereeing by Kevin Roberts. A barge from dummy half from Stewart. Penalty to Parramatta. He's ruled two markers. Not standing one behind the other against Canterbury. And Cronin will take... Phil Gould moving down to the sideline and it's, I'd say that he's going on as a replacement in the very near future for the Canterbury team. I spoke to Warren Ryan at half-time and said to him, any changes? The answer was no, but there could be soon. Price, Price, within three metres. Penalty to Parramatta. It's against the marker. And now some fisticuffs. Peter Sterling and Peter Tunks. Well, that's David and Goliath. Tunks is a giant of a man, and he and Sterling. They're having their own private discussion. Have a look at the size of this man, Peter Tunks, by comparison with Peter, Peter Sterling. Well, that's what it was all about. It was against Steve Mortimer for interfering with the man playing the ball. By rights, he's not supposed to touch him, but he was leaning all over him. And Cronin couldn't knock this one back. Would have been surprised that he knocked the other one back. I'm, well, I'll be honest with you, I'm still a bit shocked. There's Phil Gould going on for Canterbury. A member of the, the good Newtown side that Warren Ryan had, in fact, uh, is Phil Gould and Peter Tunks coming from the field. Yes, Phil Gould's a very good organiser of play and a very good ball handler. And maybe later in this game we might see Warren Ryan put some defence on. He's got enough players in the reserve grade like Paul Langmack and Brian Batiste who can handle that aspect of play for you. Kick by Cronin successful. Both flags up. And uh, Canterbury continue to lead but not by as much. 12 points to 10 now. And now... There's a question about the Parramatta try earlier, but I got the impression a Canterbury player touched it. Here's Cronin now. Sharp.
Stewart. Good yardage to be made there from Dummy Huff. Sterling switching it. Here's Groats getting involved up the centre and getting himself out of a tackle. In fact, uh, Canterbury, I would think, would have um, lasting memories of the big man at the cricket ground in the finals last year. Mares to Sterling. Sterling crunched to the ground on the Canterbury 22. Tackle number five. Win. Win. Still going is the big fellow looking to pop a one-hander. Gets it across. Touch by Canterbury. Into touch. It'll be a paramount of feed, this. Canterbury player seemed to get a touch it is a parameter feed it's a parameter scrum and sterling gave it to lydiard in from the blind wing kenny tries to get rid of farrah gets a pass away and uh, they've coughed it up parameter but uh, knocked backwards said the referee play on played by price on the 22 sharp runs it vigorously parameter have got extras out here on the right hand side growth and elder have changed positions and elder's virtually unmarked that's kenny now win short ball cronin short ball growth Growth is flying for the corner. Infield for Lydiard. Lydiard's in the score. Well, you called it Billy Anderson before it happened. David Lydiard scoring for the Eels. Their second try. Here's the replay of it. Kenny gave it to win. I thought for a moment Peter Wynn had messed this one up for them, but... He gave it perfectly to Cronin, who gave it on to Growth, and there was Growth running into that corner camera before he turned it for Lydiard. Very important try, this, for Parramatta, to get them well back into the game. They always had the extras on the right-hand side. It was simply a matter then of good passing. Growth did well. He was able to hit in the tackle, get his hands free, pop the ball up to Lydiard to score what is a vital four-pointer for the Eels. So, Parramatta in front for only the second time in the match, thanks to David Lydiard, but, of course, a lot of... A lot of very good lead-up work went into that try for Lydiard. Growth coming from his left flank, playing a very important part in it. Here's a, a good uh, picture of what Michael's looking at. He hits it sweetly, straight over the black dot. Parramatta leading now by 16 points to 12 in the NEC big game. Canterbury trailing for only the second time in the game. They trailed 2-0 after 60 seconds. But now they're down 16-12. But there's plenty of football left in this game. Taylor. Across the ground, Ella. Ella's been a little quiet today, and I'm expecting him really to explode any time. He's just trying to find those gaps now. He's trying to find places where he can run, looking to get more involved. And if he does, look out Bulldogs. Sterling. That ball was meant for Paul Mayers, but uh, it was a bad pass given to Sterling. Peter Wynn. Hasn't stopped trying all day. Plays very strongly. He really plays it from the half, Peter Wynn. Ray Price gets a kick in. Oh, what a kick from Price. That shades of his rugby union days. Oh, I didn't know he had that one in the bag. It must have been a 35 metre gain. It's a bulldog feed, 10 metres their side of halfway. Some of the fans are seeing it down on ground level. In front of the, the good grandstand here at Belmore. One by the bulldogs. Pull back in, Chris Mortimer. Here's Jimmy Lease. I think... Bill, you mentioned Steve Ella's been quiet, or appeared to be quiet. I think you can put down a similar fortune for him as for Michael Cronin. Steve Mortimer. The, the, the centre defence for Canterbury has been very strong. Yes, they've, they've set out today to shut out the, the Parramatta back line, and so far they've been fairly effective in doing it. He's pinched Mortimer. He's pinched Mortimer, the attacking player, for holding down the defence. The quick tap by Parramatta. Now he's called for the scrum. I think Roberts is of the opinion that Price wasn't or didn't take it on the mark. Yeah, Price has got to feel a little bit unfortunate in those circumstances. You, you don't have to tell the referee. There's the arm of Steve Mortimer firmly locking in the hand of uh, Paul Mayers. A bit unfortunate for Steve by the same token. He was hanging onto the ball with grim determination. 
just so happens that Mayer's got his arm in there and he finished up getting the penalty, but it, it, it's even itself out. And a quick stretch to the right for Canterbury. Barra. Plenty of excitement here. There's Rugby League for 84. It's into its second day. Great tackle. A great big, tackle big hit by Peter Wynn on Jeff Robinson. Four in front, Parramatta now. Bill Gould serving it up for Peter Kelly. Ran into uh, Price. Now Robinson. Oh, he's had his bootlaces taken off him by Ray Price. That was a daisy cutter from Price. Johnston has tackled on five. Now it's the turnover. Now Sterling. They were looking good out to the left, Parramatta. I thought Sterling would have uh, spun it quickly. He tried to. The Canterbury outside backs did a fairly good job there of shutting that out when they didn't have the numbers. They didn't have Parramatta matched, and it looked as if Parramatta had the extras, but they couldn't go on with it. Peter Wynn's almost given up to Canterbury. Six more. Ray Price with it. Inside goes Grove. Look out. Taylor. Wynn. Run around. Paul Taylor now. Playing it just outside the 22 line. Sharp. Hits it up and gets the pass away to Sterling. Stewart to Mares. Mares. Taking it towards the halfway line. Falling about five metres short. Now it's Cronin. Sterling. Charged down by Canterbury. Picked up by Price. Now with Taylor. Underneath it is Chris Mortimer. Brought down by Kenny. And the penalty. Going to Canterbury Bankstown. 22 minutes out from the full-time hooter. Parramatta leading by four. 16 to 12. Canterbury will be looking to hit back as soon as they possibly can in this match. Phil Gould's gone on, the, on as a replacement for his coach, Warren Ryan, and I'm sure that he'll be looking to set some sort of play up here. He's out very wide there, Phil, as you can see in number 15 jumper. He'd be a good 30 metres from the play the ball. It's gone quickly along the line to Jimmy Lease. Now with Steve Mortimer, Terry Lamb, Peter Mortimer. He's got through the tackle of Mayers and Stewart. Knock-on ruled on a scrum, and Peter Mortimer's suffered a hand or wrist injury. He's clutching at his right, right wrist, Peter Mortimer. He's in a lot of pain out there. With Looks like Burns is coming onto the field. Canterbury trailing by four. In front of a crowd, I would think, of around 18,000. At both teams' home ground. Fed by Sterling, won by Parramatta. A good heel and a clean tunnel. And he's got... I think it's uh, Leach. He's got Leach for getting himself offside in the, uh, the contest for the ball. Cronin finding touch. Five metres into Canterbury's area. Just got the feeling that these Parramatta backs are about to explode again. Oh! Here's a chance here for Johnston. He's keeping it on the boot. Growth picked it up. It could be big trouble for Canterbury now. Barrow's chasing Growth. He's outside the 22. And down to the 32 metre line. And a penalty will be given. Anderson has done something which was totally on my blind side and on the blind side of the cameras. Maybe the head-on may have picked it up. Wondering whether there was a little, little kick went in there, but I couldn't imagine Chris coming that caper. Now let's stay with Eric. The penalty's been given to the Eels. He actually loses his footing after running away from Farrah. Anderson comes in there. Now, it happened here. Uh, uh, there's the incident. Uh, I think... Uh, He's got Anderson for overindulging with the right hand. Price, win, Sterling, short ball, Jerd. It's down. 
and he's offside no but he's come back to the first he's come back to the first mistake which was a knock on five meters canterbury side of halfway well, warren ryan is sending plenty of personnel out there plenty of fresh stuff john money john money hanging in there with the same 13 lamb got a pass away to mortimer there's trouble no there's not what John's looking for, he probably doesn't really have in his reserve grade. He'd be looking for some tight defence to put on. Leash was hit by Stan Jern. Short ball from Mortimer to Johnston. Broken forearm is the official report for Peter Mortimer. That's rotten luck, first game of the year. Whatever. Rotten luck for anybody. Uh, at any time of the year but for oh, the first match anderson plays it to johnston they're working to the hillside gould puts the cross kick bomb back in field i think terry lamb might be in front of the kick oh taylor's made a mistake lamb scoops it up it's going to be a try popty popty's in the corner popty is over in the corner to equalize at 16 16. Paul Taylor had been doing everything right. As Bill put the kick up, the little man just absolutely lost it. And then Lamb scooped it up and away, juggled by Jimmy Lease. Growth had too many men coming at him, and PUBG in to score in the corner. Well, any kick which goes towards the uprights obviously creates a problem for the receiver. Here, Taylor, no doubt, would have been concerned about the post. He had adequate protection, had plenty of time, but the ball slipped out, was scooped up by Lamb, and there are some good football fundamentals for you. Well taken by Lease, gave the ball to Podgy, and he went over against two defenders in the corner. Just getting it down in time, Kevin Podgy. 13 minutes to go. He's kicked three from three put the dogs in front they won't come any harder than this one for you Terry hits it looks good looks great yes Canterbury Banks down snatching the victor the lead again 18 16 two points the difference 34 points scored and in this countdown for the last 10 minutes there are going to be plenty of field goal attempts Vernon's kick fielded by Pobji Lease almost to the 22 line Steve Mortimer Terry Lamb Phil Gould Beating Michael Cronin, turning it inside for Terry Lamb, supporting the ball carrier at all times. This man is Burns, the centre. He went on to replace uh, Peter Mortimer. Gould. Ooh, Ella went for the intercept. Well, that's a play we saw used at Western Suburbs. Warren Ryan, of course, was a lower grade coach there. And uh, that almost came off. That Ella <laughs> came off of the, the reverse situation. Ella read that play particularly well. He was sweating on it. question is in reverse can the eels pull this one out well you can never feel comfortable when you're playing against Parramatta they've got so many brilliant individual players that they're liable to do anything fed by Steve Mortimer and uh, the scrum is collapsing he's going to give the penalty to Parramatta yeah that was the result of a good push by the Parramatta back row he's got the Canterbury hooker Billy Johnston Well, the differential penalty, we'll see Cronin find touch about 10 metres out. And then it's a question of which, which move the, the Eels will pull out of their bag. Price and Sterling will play prominent roles. Sterling, Jerd, Price, the spin inside for Mayers. And they'll probably get themselves ready for another play on this or the next price takes it ahead hits it to within 10 meters of the canterbury line peter winners out very wide sharp said there's some some free meters to be gained here 
They're six metres out, third tackle. Decoy, Sterling showing it and grounded. Eight metres out. Parramatta have got a chance on the wide left if they can get the ball there. There are only three Canterbury defenders on the other side of the goalposts. This is where Parramatta... Are. Stewart has gone from dummy half. I think he's got it down. No! No is the ruling from Kevin Roberts. Unable to grass it. You're working hard. And I make it six and a half to go. Johnston felled by Peter Sterling. Mortimer, folks. It's been surprising today that the Canterbury haven't used the chip kick to try to unsettle a Parramatta defence, but there's still time left for that. Charge down, charge down by the Parramatta team. Chris Mortimer's had his legs knocked from under him. He passes to Jimmy Lease. And Lease is parceled up by Cronin. Now he's passed. And Terry Lamb runs with it. Warren Ryan wouldn't be happy with that sort of play from the Bulldogs. Anderson! Anderson's over halfway, but covering him up was David Lydiard. Canterbury have just got their nose in front in this game. 18 points to 16, and some of the passes they're throwing just aren't necessary. Gould. Ooh! Steve Folks was hammered to the ground by Peter Wynn. Mortimer. Jimmy Leach. Grass by Taylor. Johnston's lost it. Knock on against Taylor. And a scrum just outside the Parramatta 22 line. Well, it'll be interesting to see the composition of the front row here. Gould's gone into the front row for Canterbury. Gould and Johnson is the present front row. Got, got the penalty. Roberts just absolutely looking at the uh, facial expression, got fed up with Canterbury. He called them up a couple of times. Well, that makes the point, Ray, that you've just got to have experienced players in that front row position. Cronin finding touch 10 metres, his side of the halfway. Well, what a start to the year. Is it a, a sign of is it a sign of the new times? Manly beaten yesterday, and it's looking like Parramatta today. Cronin, six metres from the halfway line. Peter Wynn, crabbing across the ground. And these Canterbury freshmen are doing a lot of cleaning up at the moment. Sterling, Sharp, Sharp stands, opposite, knocked down by Canterbury. That'll be a knock on against the Bulldogs. And a scrum midway between the 22 and halfway. With the score at 18-16, with about four minutes to go, it's interesting to hark back to last year in the first game when Canterbury Bankstown did beat Parramatta by two. Parramatta scrum win. Taylor makes the extra man in the back line. Picks up Kenny. Kenny's taken by Farrah. Near the halfway line, Price, Peter Wynn, Wynn, Tackle about six metres inside Canterbury Territory. Sterling, long ball. Picking up Stewart, turning it back to Sterling. Sterling probing, finding Sharp. Sharp being driven by Lamb, and he's lost it. And he's going to put a scrum down, but that... Tackle must have been very heavy on Stephen Sharp. Lamb was driving him one way, and then another Canterbury defender decided to drive him the other. And as a result, the ball was flicked out. Another penalty to Parramatta. He's, he's penalising the Canterbury front row for not packing in square. Must only be seconds of this match remaining. Cronin, he's... Bound touch, not touched, in flight by Canterbury, and off. The tap will be taken five metres from Canterbury's line. First round of the Premiership, and a cliffhanger between Canterbury and Parramatta. Almost a grand final atmosphere.
as Mayers bumps off a tackle. Stewart spins it to Taylor. Taylor's swallowed up there by Terry Lamb. Well, the Bulldog defence has got a hold here, but they can't afford to give away a penalty. It's from Sterling to Groth. Groth is held. About 12 metres out. Off goes Sterling. Feeds it out to Price. Price is still going. He's pulled down. About five metres out. Taylor, Peter Wynn. It's on the ground. Mears has it for Parramatta. Tackle number five. Jurd. Sterling. Up goes the bomb. Ella's going through fast. They fly. Oh, it's bounced badly for Canterbury. And it's a try, I think. No, he's given no try. Line drop out. He's ruled. Forced by Chris Mortimer. See it again on the NEC replay. It went straight through Chris Mortimer's hands. I thought Ella was certain to score. Then it was knocked forward. A parameter player. Paul Taylor almost got a hand on it. But in amongst that... <laughs> In amongst that uh, ruck of players, he's ruled that it was forced by Chris Mortimer. This will be Parramatta's last chance. And Sterling has lost it on the first tackle. Sterling, trying his heart out, has lost it on the first. And all that remains now, one would think, would be for Canterbury to take the ball from dummy half and kill it in time-consuming football. No matter what the result, it's been a good afternoon of rugby league. Folks, now Steve Mortimer switching it to his brother Chris. He gets it a kick. It's gone over towards Steve Ellis' flank. Anderson Hanging back, here's Ella coming across the paddock. Mears goes up the middle, and he stumps to the ground 32 metres away from the Canterbury line as the siren sounds. And it's all over. Canterbury have again beaten Parramatta at Belmore. For Canterbury, Peter Mortimer and Kevin Pobge scored the tries. Terry Lamb kicked four goals and two dropped goals. And in the final analysis, how important were they? Well, for Parramatta, Cronin and Lydiard scored their tries. Cronin potted four goals. A great game of rugby league displayed by the Eels and the Bulldogs today with Canterbury picking up the two points with an 18-16 victory. We'll be in the dressing rooms in just a moment with the announcement of the man of the match. Today's Man of the Match award was won by the Canterbury 58 Terry Lamb, and he'll receive a cheque for $500, courtesy of NEC and Electronic Sales and Rentals. With me at the moment is a very happy Canterbury Bankstown coach, Warren Ryan. Warren, you've got to be happy with the, the effort put in by Terry Lamb and the way he's fitted into the side. Yes, well, I'm very happy with all of them. Uh, actually, uh, Terry played very well. He knocked a couple of field goals over, which in the long term proved the difference. Uh, the players themselves, we've just instituted a new award. It's a beautiful looking piece of uh, mantel, on your mantelpiece, a little silver bulldog on a rosewood stand, and uh, Jimmy Luce was voted the first players player uh, by his teammates. So Terry got some votes, but uh, the players went for Jimmy Luce, so they didn't agree with you. But, uh, Getting back to those field goals, was it discussed before the match or just something that Terry had lived? Millie, you should never get in depth with a coach because, uh, you know, yourself, you, you don't talk about it. We, we planned them. Of course we planned them. Uh, we didn't plan the one he missed. John, that was almost a replay of 1983, a first round two-point loss to the Bulldogs. We were hoping we could have reversed it, Bill. We wanted a two-point two victory. I know you're disappointed. How disappointed are you? Well, I'm very disappointed, but I can't afford to be too disappointed because we've got to front up again on Wednesday and it's going to be just as tough on Wednesday. So the loss has happened. We'll put it behind ourselves and we'll get our, you know, get our act together on uh, Tuesday night. So there they are, Bill Anderson talking to the coaches, Warren Ryan and John Mooney, and repeating the man of the match was Terry Lamb. Now let's have a look at the results of matches played in and around Sydney today. The teams underlined are the teams you need to take out 
the foot not played uh, any more than a couple of matches side by side since they played ball, SG ball, for Penrith. A long time since this man played SG ball, Mark Levy. But he's still playing mighty fine football. Greg McCallum is the referee. We're set for the action in the big game. Kick off by Levy is a 